Hello students. So in today's class, we are going to start with a new topic and the topic is limitation of Ohm's law. In the previous class, we have read about Ohm's law. What is it and uh, what's its property and how important the law is. Now it's time for us to know where all we can apply the Ohm's law and where it's not applicable. That's called as the limitation. It has few limits where we will find our Ohm's law working and other places we will not find this law to be true. Okay, so first of all, let's get uh, a revision of what Ohm's law is. Ohm's law states that voltage applied is proportional to the current produced in a circuit. Now, if we are removing the proportionality constant, then we will get V equals to Ri, where R is the proportionality constant where this proportionality constant is known as resistance. Now, at any point, this Ohm's law gives us the value of either voltage or current or resistance if any of the two values are known if any of the two values are known. So this is basically the Ohm's law in our current electricity. Now this uh, R resistance have the SI unit of Ohm and its symbol is this. And next to it is the graph which we can draw between our V and I. That is i on the y axis and v on the x axis will give us always a straight line so this proportionality is proven now if we go on for the limitations we will see that this particular ohm's law is valid for a for a long range of materials but still it have limitations so now let's start and we'll see what all limitations are there which are being faced by this particular law okay now see ohm's law is found to be valid over a large class of material still material exists where v and i proportionality do not hold valid now deviation usually are of the following type where v ceases to be proportional to i v ceases to be proportional to i then relation between an i and v depends upon the sign of V. See for example, in a circuit if I is current flowing, when V is voltage applied, then if V reverses its direction, then there won't be any flow of the current. One of such example we'll see like uh, in the diodes. These diodes show uniform flow of current in only one direction unidirectional okay in this case if the phase of diode is changed like if we have applied the voltage across here we will see flow of current but if diodes phase is changed like this then the, uh, even though we are applying a lot of voltage there won't be any i in it then C is relation between V and I is not unique. 
for there is like more than one value of v for the given i same current we can get for various values of voltage provided to the voltage provided to the circuit one of the example provided is gallium and as gas and it is a semiconductor now we'll see these graphs see over here this first graph this the dash line this line represents the linear ohms law the solid line is the voltage v versus current for a good conductor there is a very like initially for some period there is no deviation for conductor but later on there is a minimum deviation even for the good conductor minimum deviation for good conductors next is characteristic curve of a diode like see over here this is the forward current forward voltage applied and this is the backward voltage applied okay in this case our uh, like uh, thing which we need to observe is see here this is given milliamperes and this is given microamperes milliamperes on positive y axis and microamperes on the negative y axis why so because during the forward motion when the current is positive it increases with a high magnitude but if we see the backward motion we will see it increases very slowly and that's also in the range of microamperes and over here it comes the jenner characteristic if like we we'll keep on moving from topic to topic at a point we will read semiconductor that is the 14th chapter in uh, in our class so in that we will understand the jenner diode characteristics jenner diode is a diode which have specific properties and which actually works in the backward applied voltages and it have few ranges and characteristic and this shows that particular characteristic of jenner diode whereas this is a, a normal diodes characteristic so once we will go to semiconductor we will understand this graph more uh, like uh, elaborately but as of now it is very much important for us to know that the positive y axis gives reading in milliamperes and the negative y axis gives reading in the microampere whereas the positive uh, x axis gives voltage in the forward direction and the minus x axis gives us the backward direction voltage now the third graph as we all can see is the variation of current versus voltage for gas it is a uh, like combination of two conductors so over here see it is linearly increasing up to this particular point and here after it is decreasing little uh, like little slopily and then there is a point coming where there is neither an increase nor a decrease okay so this particular point this graph here shows a linear region now this shows a non linear because from here if we see the slope over all the period is not same when the slope at each and every point is constant that phase is known as linear phase in a graph see here on the right hand side this over here if you find slope at this particular point or this particular point or this particular point the slope at all the three points is constant so when the slope is constant we'll say this is a linear relationship whereas in any graph which doesn't show the same slope at all the three points a b and c we will say that it is a non linear relationship 
so oh, till this point this first line till this first line it the current and voltage relationship is linear after first line up to the second line current and linear sorry current and voltage relationship isn't linear and then we'll see up to third line it is showing a negative resistance region where the resistance is negative here we are increasing the voltage but our current is decreasing voltage is being increased but current is decreasing so such a relationship is shown by gallium arsenic okay so it doesn't follow the ohm's law if it follows the ohm's law the graph will go like this like the blue line okay in all the three dotted lines 1 2 3 graph will be extremely linear if gas gas follows the ohm's law okay now we will understand in a very general way what all other things are when we are reading about the limitations of our law okay so see over here uh, first thing which uh, is to be known is that ohm's law is not applicable to unilateral electrical components unilateral electrical components such as or we can say diodes and transistors now question arises over here is what is a unilateral electrical component so unilateral networks allow the current to flow in only one direction okay allows current to flow in only one direction now second thing ohm's law is no, also not applicable to non linear elements non linear elements now what does a non linear element means the elements which are like uh, one thing voltage and current will be always related so in non linear elements voltage and current are not exactly proportional okay applied voltage and current do not show exact proportional relationship now third thing are uh, see resistance of those of those elements changes for different values of voltage and current and one of the example for non linear element is uh, thyristor t h y r i s t o r thyristor okay now the third is relation between v and i depends upon the sign of v as we have read already so uh, this happens in the case of diode case of diode if sign or direction of voltage applied changes the current will not flow so these are the few of the things which gives us an idea about the limitation of ohm's law
one of the most important example which we need to keep on reading and understanding is an example of a semiconductor like semiconductors like silicon and germanium don't obey ohm's law and why is it so because they are known as non ohmic conductors okay non ohmic conductors one thing which over here you need to pay attention or you may ask a question to me is that you are talking about a semiconductor see what i have written semiconductors like silicon and germanium are non ohmic conductors so what does it mean it means that whenever semiconductor is being doped with the impurity it behaves as a conducting material but whatever it is been conducting it does not follow the conductive properties like an ohmic conductor they behave like they copy conductors they copy conductors but they do not copy their property of being ohmic but do not copy conductors property of being ohmic okay so that's why we can call them non ohmic their relation of voltage and current will not be proportional not proportional they will be like non linear elements but like of course we can say they will behave like non linear elements but they are not considered into the elements they are semiconductors they are categorized into semiconductor so whenever you are writing these points you have to write a separate line for non linear elements giving example of this thyristor and then you have to write about semiconductors and you have to write that they are non ohmic conductors though they are semiconductor when dope behaves as conductor and are non ohmic in a relationship or in property so that's all about the limitation of ohm's law we'll meet up in the next class with new topic and it's all for today's class have a good day guys and bye bye